Good morning. This morning I am delighted to have an interview with Allie Wetzke. Got it? Wetzke. Yes. Allie Wetzke. And she is very interesting. And one of the things she's done is brought one of the books that she's written. You also went to law school. And now you sell real estate. What an interesting... And you moved. Did I read this morning eight times? Ten times in 11 years. All right, let's start with that. Okay. Why did you move 10 times in 11 years? Um, well, I'll tell you where we moved. And so okay. we were Massachusetts, Maryland, Ohio, California, Illinois, Tennessee, and back to Illinois with a few local moves in there as well. And um, so we moved for my husband's career, for my career. He went to medical school. I went to law school. Then we moved because we thought it'd be a good idea to move. Then we realized it wasn't. <laughs> and then so we moved back. And so lots of different reasons, but okay. usually for, for school or for uh, work. Why did you live here in when? Wilmette. Yeah, Wilmette. so we landed here in Wilmette. My husband did his residency in um, at Northwestern downtown. Okay. So we were living in Chicago and then we moved to Tennessee and then we realized it wasn't the right place for us. And so when we were looking where to move back, he had done his fellowship here at, at Nor what used to be Northwestern and then Endeavor Health. And they keep changing the they name. They keep changing, keep the, changing name. the name. Yes. But um, just knew we wanted to be in this area. And so moved to Wilmette because of the schools, the proximity to the lake, and um, just it seemed like a really great place to raise a family. Interesting that you would choose here after all those other reasons. Mm -hmm. It is a great place. I agree. It's a great place to raise your family and all that, but it's interesting. Why did, and you said there are several moves in the middle of that, mm -hmm. that like you were in one place and moved like from house to house. Right. I'm a seven-year mover myself. Every okay. seven years you have to move, and I've lived in Alaska and Wyoming, so I've had a taste of very different then. Mm -hmm. What what did you learn as you were moving? So Doing much. All that? <laughs> yeah, Here's so the book. Come on, I, know. Right. I so, learned so much. Um, no, wait a minute. Was, yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about that. But, yeah, right. Yeah. But I think there's there's so many different things to learn. There were different stages of our life too, and people always ask like, which is your favorite? Uh, and I love living in Wilmette. I cannot imagine living in a better place for our family in terms of the community and all that. Um, in terms of learning, I mean, it's never ending amount of learning of that we've done. I would say kind of the biggest, hardest part was when we moved to Tennessee and it was really hard for me to make friends. And I had never had that situation before because we'd moved everywhere. That was right. not really, had never been an issue before. And it took me about six months to make a friend. And six months was a long time. We had um, three kids, so my kids were three and under. My husband was at a yes. new job. Uh, we didn't know anybody there. And I'm willing to throw myself out there. I'm not, you know, I, I'm very happy to jump into situations, but it was very difficult. And so I realized if I had that situation after all of these moves that I'd had, that other people must feel the same way. And so that's really what kind of changed the trajectory of my life. And I ended up starting a blog, The Art of Happy Moving. I wrote this book. Um, and then when the pandemic came, I was doing a lot of talks around the, the country for mm -hmm. The Art of Happy Moving and helping people through the process of moving and the stress and all of that. And I realized I really should be doing this one-on-one. -on -one. And so that's what led me into real estate. Interesting. That you, and do you love doing real estate? I love doing real estate. Why? Um, one of the things initially, so I went to law school, like I love kind of the legal side of it, even though I'm not practicing law, obviously, <laughs> very clearly. Um, but I just like being around contracts again, which might sound very yes. silly. No. Um, but I, I love, I just love helping people through this process. Like I've, I kind of would speak on a national level, like these are tips that I have, but to be able to kind of incorporate it with someone and really help them through one of the most stressful times of their lives, um, I, I just, I really appreciate that and I feel very thankful that I get to be there with them through this process. Mm -hmm. um, and I just think relationships are everything. And to be in a business where relationships are so crucial, I just think that that's, it really fits who I am and to be able to focus on that. I think it could be hit on two interesting things. One is, I am always talking to people about that when you are working with people who are moving, buying or selling, mm -hmm. you are in the most intimate relationship they may ever have. Yep. And it's brief, you only have it for this period of time, mm -hmm. but recognize it's going to be, in, intimate's the best word that I can think about. Yes. Um, and that you have to have the skills. Several of the jobs I had when I traveled all the time, and when I was doing it, I didn't love it, mm -hmm. But the learning experience was there were days I was in five, I worked, I was for one of the real estate franchises. So I would be in one office, I might be in five different offices in a five day period of time. You had 30 seconds to walk in, to make friends, to make them like you, 
to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. That has stood, that was great. I didn't like it. Who wants to be the stranger walking into the office all the time? Right. But it taught me such good skills that I'm like fearless wherever you're going. Mm -hmm. We're gonna find friends. Right. So I can see that it would be six months would have been a long, especially with babies. Yes. With babies because you're kind of stuck at home and a lot of times for the the easiest way when you're moving is when you have kids. I'm also I just taught a senior class as well, mm -hmm. and I think that's one of the big things that we were talking about in the senior class was how isolated so many of the seniors feel. Yeah. Sort of the same, it, my husband and I, our kids are I've grown up kids. Mm -hmm. We don't have school events to go to and meet the people in the neighborhood. We don't have those kinds of things anymore. So it's kind of interesting that you would say that you would be so aware that those are the really critical things of moving. And yeah. it's whether you're going to have a happy move or a sad move. Right. Yes. Yeah. I think it's just so important to focus on the relationships as soon as you move somewhere, actually before you move somewhere, is one of the tips that, that I give is if you know you're going to move somewhere, reach out, social media, wherever, and just say, hey, I'm moving to Albuquerque. Does mm -hmm. anybody know somebody? And someone always knows somebody. Mm -hmm. Just to have that one person that you can connect with. Um, realtors are usually like the one and only person that that peop that someone that might know someone, when they move yes. there and so just as a reminder again of how critical like you said how intimate this relationship it is, is when people are, are moving there um, but to go back to find somebody that you can connect with because even if that be person doesn't become your friend they can connect you to other people mm -hmm. and so just kind of starting that web and to not wait until you've already unpacked all your boxes you're there for a month and you're like okay now what it just is a, a lot harder to jump into kind of the friend making that you need to do i went to big sky montana once mm -hmm. and got there in the snowstorm and it was a bad night and finally found one breakfast went and had breakfast with some people and they were lovely and charming to me and then went and did my work and all that stuff. Came back the next morning and they said, so Deborah, good to see you again. Do you want the same thing for breakfast? I've been in love with Bozeman, Montana, with Big Sky, Montana ever since. Uh -huh. <laughs> I can't, and I say to realtors, take your people to the local coffee shop. Yeah. Introduce them. Yes. So when they go back, because they're going to bring their husband or their someone back, yeah. they know who they are. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just some of those really small things that I think make such a big difference. Mm -hmm. What else would you tell me if I was moving? Um, lots of things. <laughs> yes, I would Give say some so. Of your favorites. One of the, um, I would say, I talk a lot about decluttering in my book, and it's just so critical to do all of that before you move. And it's, I think it is one of the secrets of happy moving to not just like bringing all your stuff, moving to the new place. Like think of it as a new beginning. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that I hope anyone who's moving that they read this chapter, it's about habit formation. Um, because there was a study done that found that 36% oh, of successful habit changes were because of a move to a new place. Mm. And so take advantage of that. You have kind of gotten rid of your routines. You're in a new place. Even if you're just like uh, moved across the hall, like just a new space. and to take advantage of that. Think of like, okay, what do you want to do differently in your life now that you have this fresh start? Is it, you know, you want to spend more time with family? Do you want to start a new exercise routine? Whatever it is, incorporate that into your life when you're thinking of your move I think that's place. why I want to move every seven years. I think, yes, it totally, really I get that. Yeah. It's like a new, <laughs> it's a fresh start. It's a fresh start. <laughs> yeah. The other thing that happened, this is a funny one, when we moved out of Alaska, mm -hmm. so they were packing for us and then the move to come back. And they said, by the way, it's like seven dollars a pound to move your goods. Yeah, that is a really good way to sort. Yes, because you would pick up everything and go mm, fourteen dollars. Right. No, we don't need it. exactly. <laughs> really, it was a great yeah. way to. Oh, uh, we yep. don't need that. That yes. doesn't need to come with us. Yet. I have a decluttering order for moving in my book, which is very much dependent yeah. on weight. And so thinking of the weight and the size of things, yes. um, the books, the magazines, the furniture, all of those really heavy things, is it worth $7 a pound? Is it worth like, $7 yeah, a pound? Like, no, I'm not going to No, I this. can't be doing it. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so many of the kids now, like I have all, you know, I had Grandma's China. I finally managed to get one of the kids to take Grandma's China. <laughs> um, my sister took Grandma's glasses because she's got three girls and maybe she's hoping the three girls somewhere along the line will love Grandma's crystal. <laughs> but it's been, but none of them were going like, I, I lost it after that right. from my grandma. I wanted that. That stuff mm, nope. they don't <laughs> they, they don't um, they don't so you lit you you are doing real estate mm -hmm. what's your least favorite part of real estate um, I think that one of the things that I need to work on 
is I care a lot about my clients. Mm -hmm. And so trying to find a way to let all of the stress that they're feeling not be something that I take on for myself. Um, so that is one thing that just kind of, to have that, I don't know, to have just that care, have, be boundary. caring, but the boundary, boundary. the boundary of, um, I think of that all the time too with therapists, like how, how do they not take on all of the issues that they the mis- see? The, the, the sadness, yeah, the, the misery, sadness, the all that. And yes. so just trying to kind of be uplifting so that to counterbalance whatever mm-hmm. stress they're going through. Because as you said, it's like one of the biggest events of their lives. Uh, and so to just always try to keep that positivity up um, for them and for myself. If I was brand new in real estate, what would you tell me right now? I would say in terms of how to help people or just... No, just no? in terms of I'm just sitting in the office there and I'm saying, what should I do right now? What would you tell me? What I Look back to what you did when yes. you, you came here not knowing anybody. Right. What did you do? Um, so, I well, I did know people here in this area, but in terms of like starting from scratch, I would say it's very important to get into a routine. Routines to me are just so important. Um, so in terms of the morning routine, I'm very... Mm -hmm. I'm very much into that and I think that also goes into what I think is important in terms of showing up for your clients and so for example I do gratitude journal every day and so every morning I write down three things I'm grateful for and I think as a new agent I think that would be a really good thing to do too to kind of get into the mindset of like what am I thankful for because it's a hard business it's a hard business (laughs) it's a hard business so what am I grateful for having the routine I do you know the exercise and affirmations and all of that um, and then time blocking I think would be super important for for agents I think that's one of the things new agents struggle with yes and so just kind of setting aside time what am I going to be doing and just focusing on the relationships Um, and you're saying if you're someone new to the area new to the area what do I do yeah I would say get involved I mean the first thing is jumping into ways to get involved whether it's something that you're interested in like joining a paddle you know group Mm -hmm. or something like some way to get involved because that's also for your own happiness that you need to be in a place where you can you can help others and and you're meeting people Mm -hmm. so then also joining like chambers and like the business groups I, to me that has been very helpful and um, meeting people in the community and just going to the local coffee shop if you're going to go like you said you're, you pick one and stay there yeah, pick one go over there <laughs> like if that's where you're going to yeah. do your work go pick the local coffee shop mm-hmm. and get to know the people who are there every day and yeah. just just a hi i mean you don't need to um, you're not making your new best friends no, but but just a hello it's a happy w- you know, I was laughing and doing something. I was talking about my two favorite stores. Mm-hmm. One of them is Aldi because I buy dog food and I buy all the things that I need at Aldi's. Mm-hmm. And the other is Trader Joe's. Mm-hmm. Both of them are owned by the same company. Okay. Um, but I was thinking about why I love both of them. Both of them have taken what they do mm-hmm. and they do it extraordinarily well. I don't need one single thing from Trader Joe's. Mm-hmm. I mean, really and truly, I don't. <laughs> Chocolate brownies. <laughs> um, their candy is pretty good, too. Yeah. They have a couple of cookies, too, that are dandy. <laughs> But they're always nice to me. Yes. I mean, they're always so nice and cheerful and happy yeah. that I feel better walking out of their store than I did walking into the store. Mm-hmm. My local jewel, not so much anymore. Right. Really, I don't want to go there anymore. I don't yeah. like that anymore. Yeah. So I think you're this being uplifting and being grateful for what you're doing. Um, it's interesting advice because I get some people who say, "Well, you do this," and it, you know, I kind of believe in that more spiritual advice because Mm -hmm. it changes the way you look at the world right yeah and i i also kind of going back to what i talk about in the book about friendship and how to make new friends um you need to be in a good place it is very hard like when i was there for six months it's you feel this desperation this loneliness where Mm -hmm. you're like i just need to meet someone (laughs) and but it's it's it's, like it's overwhelming It's, it's it's and you can smell that desperation right like that's not going to attract someone to me to be like, oh, she really needs a friend, right? <laughs> I, and she's going to call me yeah. all the time now. And so I think the same is true with real estate agents, right? You yes. don't want to be sending out desperate signals like, I need a friend, I need a client, I need like. You want to be in a good place where you're doing something you love, where people are attracted to you because you're shining, right? Because you're you're happy, you are cycling, you're knitting, whatever it is that's like your thing. Um, then you will attract like-minded people who are also equally excited about whatever you're doing. So I think it's just important for all of us to be doing the things we love to attract more good things. I like what you're. I like the word you use that you're shining. Mm-hmm. I think you meet people and you know they are. I want to hang with them. Yeah, I want to meet. I want to talk to them. Mm-hmm. People who are coming in and they're grumping. 
Right. <laughs> really, I got enough grumping in my own life. I don't really yes. need your grumping too. <laughs> right. Really, yes. Um, are you writing another book? Not at the moment. I'm very busy with real estate. Okay. Uh, I might focus more on my blog again, which I had done for, for some time. Um, so I might go back to writing for that more often. How would people find your blog? It's artofhappymoving.com. Okay, so easy yeah. to find that. Yep. Okay, <laughs> good to know. Yes. Um, I've asked words of advice. Mm -hmm. You've told me that it sounds like you have a happy life as well. I mean, just as well as in real estate. What do you see happening in the next year, next two or three years in real estate? I think there's been a lot of changes, obviously. Um, I'm curious to see what will happen with everything with the buyer's agency agreements and all of the, mm -hmm. all of the commissions. I personally, I like, I know we've always should have been doing the buyer's agency agreements and it's what I have done with my clients, mm -hmm. but I like that we can tell people, look, this is the law. We need to have this buyer agency agreement before we can go see something because I think it really focuses uh, all of our attention to say, do we really want to work with this person on both sides? And that's the interesting thing. People yeah. were so crabby about, oh, they're working at I said, don't you have people that in 30 minutes, you don't want them? Right. Or, well, they're, they're going to they're, they're gonna do this, they're going to do that. Well, and the other thing I kept saying to them, aren't they doing those things to you already? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so right. I'm not sure exactly what you, what new things you think they're going to think of to do, you know, yes. like consumers are going to think of to do. Yeah. So I like, I am a big fan of buyer's agreements. Yes. It just makes it m more professional. Mm -hmm. it, Absolutely. And I think it's yeah. going to take and make people waste less of realtor's time. I agree. Yes. Yeah. So I think that that's a positive in our industry. Um, and hope you know. Hopefully, everyone will be doing them. <laughs> I know they're supposed to. Actually, come <laughs> the first of the year, they have. It will be state law. Yes. Okay. So I think we'll yes. be okay at that. Point. Okay. Uh, but I do think that that's a positive in our industry, mm -hmm. and um, and you know, I think the technology has been incredible with all of the AI that is. I think will be. Are you very using helpful. AI a yes. lot? Yes. Yes. How are you using it? Um, I use it for a lot of planning, and so thinking about marketing and. Just, you know, I chat with, I, I do Tom Ferry, and so I am okay. in the Tom Ferry network, and they have a Tom Ferry AI, which is specific to real estate. Also, a Compass has their own AI platform. And so just going in there, and I can just talk about what am I going to do marketing-wise? What should I do? Um, these are my goals. Here's my mission. Here are all my reviews. What do people say? Like, I, I will input all of my reviews and have AI synthesize it for me. And so then they'll, it'll say, then I know what are the, the clients what appreciate they, what of what like? I'm doing. Yes. yes. And I'll do more of that. And so, yeah, I use AI a lot to just, it's like having a team member <laughs> that I can kind of bounce ideas off of and say, you know, would this work? How about this? So, all right. That's yeah. interesting. All right. So I think, I think you're right. AI, is, AI I, I, I don't think it's the terror that people think it's going to be. No. Well, for some people it might be. <laughs> Seriously, who people who want to resist it and don't want to figure out how to use it at all. Yeah. But I also am firmly convinced it's never going to. It will never replace the live person who's showing you a house. Never. Not never. ever. No. I just this industry. I, this. I think this is going to be one of the last industries to be taken over by AI in terms of like, oh, we don't need realtors anymore because I'll always ask you in a listing presentation, are you considering going for sale by owner? And they go, absolutely not. Why would I do that? <laughs> that, that, like, like, that sounds yeah. awful. And because it's the human connection, it's helping someone through the process. Yes. They want the service of, you know, top service. I'll help you through this process. And that's not going to go away. No, I don't think that's going to go away either. I think it's just a stressful situation. Mm -hmm. People need support during stressful situations. Absolutely. So the smart people, you know, maybe for uh, truly, you and I are, I'm a seven-year mover. Maybe I don't need the same level of, but I even look at in my own house. My husband has one level of stress that he has when we move. I have another. Right. I'm pretty good at this moving thing. I've done it enough to be pretty good at this. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't like all that. Right. So... It's nice to have you in the between us. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's nice to have you and that's what we do, right? Yes, Where we're exactly. like, okay, let's figure out everyone, you know, yes. what everyone needs and what try to keep need. everyone happy and, and yeah. on the same road. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's been lovely to talk to you this morning. Same Thank you so much for taking your time. Is there one, let's show your book again. Okay. <laughs> the Art of Happy Moving. Um, Ali, I th and it's, I was looking at it this morning. It is a beautiful book. What a great book this would be to get. I'm just going to give a plug for this. Please. <laughs> what a great book this would be to hand in your stock that when you are having people who are moving, to be able to hand them this as they were going through moving because it's not, it's how to declutter, pack, start over while maintaining your sanity and finding happiness. And it's broken into love. I'm just going to even do this. <laughs> Checklists and chapters that make it easy for people to do this. I think this would be a great gift for your people who are moving. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you.